Maybe you heard the news I got back on my feet Once more Took a break from the booze Took a walk to the jewelry store the Composer is the first way I like to describe myself. I've been through the role of performer, um, I've been through uh, the role of producer, but I like composer because it doesn't limit me to necessarily doing one style or one thing. It's just being involved in the process. My father played the drums and my mother was a dancer. My mother gave that up to have children and I always felt like she really pushed me musically and I felt like part of that was because she was not able to do that anymore. She was not able to express herself. And my father was a jazz drummer and he would have people over to the house. Um, and he would have practices a couple nights a week at the house and I would pad out in my pajamas and I was probably like eight years old and I'd already started playing the piano. So they would say, oh, it's little Mitchell. Little Mitchell, come and play us a song. And I'd come and play and the band leader would smoke cigars in the house and they'd stay up late and then when I got to be about 10 or 11, my mother was like, yeah, we're not doing that anymore. We're, we gotta stop that. So my father actually stopped playing drums to focus on his career and his family and, and everything like that. And then picked it up again about 15 years ago. And if she was alive, she'd say, that she has no... A lot of what I'm doing now is based on what I've already done. Is that I wrote for a lot of years, and I've, I've been writing on and off my whole life, and a lot of that never saw the light of day. So I'm mining a lot of, a lot of things that I've created in the past, and they're now just kind of coming to light. One of the things that I wanted to do uh, with the Somnium sessions is I've always had trouble sleeping. It's plagued me my whole life. I've done meditation. I power down electronics by a certain time at night. I have a daylight lamp I use in the morning. Everything I can do to try and get some sound sleep. Um, but since I was young, I made these mixtapes to fall asleep to. They would be tapes that would go through a lot of different styles of music. There would be low key electronica music in there. And then there would be a folk song that I found really soothing. And then there would be, there would always be a classical piece in there because it's still to this day, it's some of the most emotive, beautiful music that I've ever encountered. Um, so with the, the Somnium sessions, I want it to be that kind of mixtape. So I always want to try and include um, two pieces that were made by somebody else. One of those pieces, more contemporary, or my version of a more contemporary piece, and one of those pieces is something that's hundreds of years old. Because I think that's an important part of the journey of the Somnium Sessions, of being able to float, being able to really dream and drift away, um, is, to, is to go through different phases. It's not just to be calm and then calmer and then you know, you're in, in a dream state, is to, is to take a journey in your mind. And when the music takes you, that's where you wanna go. It's not always a positive place. Sometimes there's some darker melodies that come in. Um, and you know some, some maybe some fantasies and visions that you have that come along with that but the whole idea is that it can also take you through, through some familiar places at some point in the journey i want people listening to hear something and go, i know this song this is amazing and it gives them that that kind of feeling of comfort that goes along with it You can't just sit down, or you shouldn't just sit down and write music every time you touch your instrument. There's got to be practice. You have to get your technical skills up to where you want them. So when you are inspired, you can sit down and write, and you can go in a new direction. When I hear something that, or see something that really moves me, I feel like I'm not alone. When I hear that song that expresses exactly the way that I feel, I feel the sadness in the piece, 
but I also feel a connection with the artist or I feel a connection with the art. You know, I, help, I think it helps us get angry when we need to get angry. It helps us express a happiness in some ways. Um, but it runs the whole gamut of those emotions. I mean, it's kind of like, it's something that w would exist whether we wanted it to or not. A lot of people that I know, they just don't have the opportunity to break free. They have children, they have a career and then a side gig on top of that. They have too many things to, to really be able to explore what their passions are, even to put their foot in that pool and to see, could this be something that inspires me? And a big issue with that now is that we are so inundated with ways to escape. I mean, they're right there. They're on our device that we have to use to communicate with other people are 400 ways to escape and it never stops. When we get home, then there's a bigger device that we look at for more escape. So we never really have to be alone with ourselves. We don't have to really sit with ourselves. And I think that that really keeps us from being able to to grow our, our creative process and to look into whether or not that is something that's a part of us, to be able to explore, is there that closet door that I could open and then all this stuff comes out that I can make into something bigger. I went through a period of depression, I went through a period uh, of personal issues, and I would tell myself, I'm just gonna sit in front of a piano for one hour every day. I don't have to play it, I don't have to touch it, but I'm going to sit here. That is all I have to do to improve my life. I knew it, like somehow in my core that I knew that just getting that started was what I needed. Um, because I went through about a 15 year period where art and music was not my focus at all. It was, I put it to the side, it was a hobby. It was something that came around from time to time. But I was not living my passion whatsoever. I was just kind of trying to stay alive. Art is never finished, it's abandoned. Every single thing I've created has been kind of ripped from my hands because there's been a deadline. And there's always some way to make it better. And there's always that last thing I want to improve. But this part's already done, and this part already went to press, and you can't change it anymore. And I'm like, but that one note! And no one cares. Like, nobody knows about that one note, nobody cares. Um, so it's important during the creative process to give yourself a break, um, and I'm still struggling with that, because your idea of perfection will never be, it's never gonna be finished, it's never gonna be perfect. It can't be, there is no such thing. I don't know that I've ever created anything that's been perfect in my eyes. I would say strive for fulfillment, not perfection. That's the way I would put it, because fulfillment is something that you can accomplish along the way in stages. Um, depending on if you're working on something that's long form, like a book. Um, oh my gosh, whole another can of words. <laughs> Writing three, three to eight minute songs is a journey for me, you know. Doing something like that, I can't even imagine. But I think fulfillment happens in stages on the journey that you can, you can kind of cash in on as you go. You can say, I've gotten this far, this is something that I've done, I've already created this much of it. And at the end of the day, even if you look back and say it's not perfect and there are things I would change about that, um, you have made something where there was nothing, you know? That is something that's fulfilling to you. And that's an attainable goal. That's something that you can accomplish at any level of the game, whether you're just starting out or you've been, you know, doing your art for 70 years. It's always something that you can achieve. I think my unorthodox element is to be able to create something right now. It, it's very applicable to what I'm doing uh, right now. 
because since I just emerged kind of back into music full time in the last few years, I have found a way to bring something to people with the Somnium sessions that I think a lot of people can enjoy and will positively affect a lot of people, but be able to keep my own spin on it, to be able to keep it a little bit on the edge electronically, um, using the synth patches that I do, using the vocal manipulation that I do, to still be a little bit out there, which keeps me fulfilled, that I'm pushing the envelope a little bit, but to be something that can be helpful to so many people and can give so many people uh, a chance to get away. I don't think you ever really find out what it is. I think you, you're constantly looking for it, but as you change, it changes with you. As you go through different processes in life, um, that element can kind of continues to shift. Um, so I think what I would recommend to people that are looking for it is start somewhere, give yourself the opportunity to invest time into it. Always start with a manageable amount of time. If you have, if it's only a half an hour a week, it's a half an hour a week and that's fine. But don't buy it off more than you can chew. Don't start out saying, I'm gonna do this 10 hours a week if it's not manageable, because you'll give up. It'll get hard, uh, you know. During the process, you won't be able to create the way you'd hope you will. You're gonna have down times where you feel like you can't do anything right. You're gonna put yourself out there and no one's gonna care sometimes. Sometimes it's not gonna get the reception that you want. Most of the time, it's not gonna get that reception. So you're gonna to have to be able to fight through that. So start with a manageable amount of time that you can build from. You don't want to start with too much time and then scale back from there. And ask yourself if I'm going to commit to this, if I really want to bring art into my life and I want to try and develop something that I feel is there. I feel like there is a yearning in me. There's a kernel of inspiration that I've always wanted to develop. Look at your life critically and ask yourself, what am I going to stop doing now in order to make time for that. What is it that I'm going to give up to bring that into my life? I'm gonna stop watching YouTube videos for 30 minutes a day. You know, at the end of the week, maybe that gives me an extra five hours and I'm gonna devote that to this art. I'm gonna stop going to Saturday brunches. I'm gonna stay home and work on, and stare at this blank canvas and see what comes to me. But consistency is huge. Making sure that you are practicing something daily if possible, weekly if not, consistently, and set yourself a timeline of a year, two years if you can. Say, I'm gonna do this every day or every week for this amount of time for a year, and then I'm gonna stop and assess. And I'm gonna see how I've grown, I'm gonna see if I'm happy with it, I'm gonna see if I feel like there's a future for it. But I've seen so many people fail before they even get started. Because life's tough, there's a lot to do, and just getting the rent paid can chew up so much of your life that uh, you really need to be dedicated to seeing it through. Because sometimes, and speaking from experience right now with what I'm going through with trying to create this, there's self-doubt is there, um, there's FOMO with other things in life that pass you by where you think, oh, I wanna do that thing, but I'm gonna stick with this. I'm gonna dedicate myself to this for this amount of time to really give it a go and hopefully continue to add to that.